Hi everybody and welcome back to McNulty's Book Corral. Thanks for checking in with me. Today we're going to talk about a Marvel mini-series. It is called Captain America and Iron Man, issues 1 through 5. I just finished reading it recently and I think it was very well written series. Uh, the covers are by Alex Ross and it was overall very well written and very well illustrated. Here's another one of the covers. Uh, Alex Ross did these really fun a series to read. Um, here's the last issue. Uh, I'm sure they'll collect this in a trade paperback at some point in the future. I hope they do. It was really good. It has, a, a, however, an issue that seems to be a, a, a part of the industry right now, which is the color palette. Uh, obviously, they're using a digital platform. They have been for a very long time now. And with that comes different trends. And the current trend in comic books across the board not just this particular series uh, the trend is to um, avoid primary colors and to use a washed out haze uh, and mute the colors um, somewhat so that when you're looking at them um, it has a different feel I think this is a result of um, comic book industry professionals uh, trying to go for realism you know, instead of making it look comic booky, which is an old phrase, um, uh, they're trying to get it, you know, to be more relevant. Uh, and I'll show you some examples of what I believe in this series really is extremely poor color choices um, throughout. Here's a good panel right here to look at, um, which is you can't see what's happening in the background. And uh, that's because the colors are so dark that the intricate details that the artist put in the background are muted by the wash the uh, the digital wash that they're applying to the scene uh, and to the background colors themselves they're again they're going more for realism uh, and so when they do that they really undermine the idea of sequential art which is multiple um, creative elements taken together in this case I thought that the coloring was really poorly done I thought that the uh, you know it's just it's just dark dark looking um and i think you know the early issues were were the worst i think issue three was the worst of all of them uh which had some really poor choices here in this example here for example that's actually captain america you see all the light is here on this side it should be reflecting on him uh and so that uniform would be blue remember uh and not a washed out brown or dark blue so that it's almost black i don't know what the colorist was thinking here so this is an example again here another same thing here it's just washed out you can't even tell what's happening here you have to squint like what was that um the digital platform has a lot of elements to it that are useful to the artist and the colorist the way they do um, a burst of flare uh, in some of the motion that happens can be done digitally uh, accentuating the action somewhat but the colors need to be primary colors you don't see a lot of that anymore um, and it's really disappointing to see because I think this would have been a, a series you would recall better uh, if they had better coloring you know sequential art so my advice to all of the professional quote-unquote a colorist in the comic book industry would to go back and look at Will Eisner's The Spirit and take a look at the composition of those panels and how they were colored and how the coloring accentuated that incredible artwork. The artwork in this series is excellent. Really, really good. It's the color choices are poor. The writing is spot on. Uh, I mean, they have the characters of Captain America and um, Iron Man down really well. There's some good witticisms between the two. Uh, really well done. You know, I just, I, I just didn't like the coloring uh, in this, and I see this in a lot of comic books today. I don't see it just in Marvel. Um, I see it in DC and Independence. It's, you know, people are just using this color palette incorrectly. The digital color palette, they're not using it right. Um, the editors don't know any better. They probably the ink is probably still wet on their diplomas. You know. Um, and they don't have the experience to understand this. They, maybe they never heard of Will Eisner. Maybe they don't know what this means. Um, what's really irritating about it is that they're not consistent in this approach. If they were consistent, I would say, okay, all across the board, that was just really a lame choice. But then every once in a while, you'll get a, 
a panel or two that they actually kind of did it right, you know. Um, so I'm recommending Captain America Iron Man 1 through 5 um, with a caution. Uh, expect some really poor coloring choices in this series. Uh, excellent writing, excellent artwork throughout. If you can see it, good for you. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously, folks, come on. Um, you know, this is what you get when you're using a different type of technology. Uh, and the technology changes every couple of generations, you know, and they start to do things that becomes a trend. Then everybody thinks that's the way to do it. Uh, again, Marvel doesn't do this all the time, but a lot of their titles have this kind of haze to it. It's like one primary color that's been muted. Uh, if they're in a warehouse, you know, they try and darken it to make it look real. Just give me a break, okay? Sequential art, Will Eisner. Take a look at Will Eisner. Take a look at um, Prince Valiant, Hal Foster, uh, and the, the construction of those panels in the way that those were colored. You know, the coloring is equally as important as the artwork, and the artwork in this series was great. The writing was great. Again, um, the coloring is meant to accentuate that and enhance the idea of an imaginary world. These are about, you know, superheroes. This is escapist entertainment. Um, the realism doesn't work. Uh, you know, with some exceptions, you know, I mean, we have, unfortunately, Frank Miller to, to, uh, to thank for that. Isn't that a shame? Uh, with the Dark Knight series so many years ago, um, trying to modernize it and all that. Uh, I don't have a problem with that now and again, but when that's all you're doing and that's all you're seeing, uh, it washes out. It's nothing. What was memorable about this was the writing. Um, the artwork was great, but you can't really see it the way it should be seen. So again, a little rant there. Um, I'm not naming names. I'm not trying to piss anybody off, you know, uh, but this is uh, one example of something that worked really well except for uh, and you can figure out the rest on your own so if you get a chance and you want to try something different i do recommend captain america and iron man uh recent uh, uh, series mini series from marvel and until next time my friends i'll see you along the dusty trail <laughs>